Coming up on Let's Get to the Points. Let's get started tonight with a new segment, and it's called What's in Our Wallet? And we just made this up. So, <laughs> Miguel, you had a fat wallet. So I think we should yeah, start with We need to allocate cool. some time for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my husband and I are still working on that card. So I have it on my Apple Pay so I can use it because this is a MasterCard. However, I read on Miles Talk that they're switching this business card over to a Visa. So this has interesting implications. God, there's still more. Hold on. I'm going as fast as I can. <laughs> it's a 45 minute uh, show, Nicole. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm going. I'm getting there. All right. I know they're a Alaska card, and I have my gold card, my Bank of America debit card, and James's VentureX. All right, we're done. Now, let's get to the points. She loves to pretend being a crazy rich Asian. It's Serena. Sometimes his journey is the destination. It's me, game. She takes family budget travel to another level. It's Nicole. And he only lies flat over the Atlantic and Pacific Ocean. It's Mitch Shannon. Hi there, and thank you for joining us on Let's Get to the Points video and audio podcast, where we bring you the very best in tips and tricks in the world of miles, points, and travel. I'm Mitch Shannon, and I am joined by my beautiful co-hosts who love traveling the world with their families using their credit card points and miles. First up, it's the always smiling and laughing <laughs> points and miles guru, Serena. Hi, everyone. He's the guy who can help find you the best deal for your credit card points. It's our Miguel. Yeah, that's it. And being a high school math teacher, she can calculate points deals for you in microseconds. It's Nicole. Hey, everyone. Please help us out by clicking that subscribe button now to our YouTube channel, Spotify, Apple Podcast, and wherever you watch or listen. Also, give us a like and leave us a comment below and let us know what you think about our show. Like and the like, Miguel. Now it's time to do it. Let's get to the points. Show 49 is here, you guys, and we've got a lot to talk about tonight. We've got the Hilton Business Credit Card. We got news on a new Qatar Airways credit card to discuss and many other things. I'm currently aboard the new cruise line Explora One in Canada, and we're going to talk a bit about that more a little later on. But let's get started tonight with a new segment, and it's called What's in Our Wallet? This just spontaneously, we just made this up. So <laughs> I've got my prop. Are you guys ready? Do you guys have your props? I have Apple Pay. Oh, well, hey. <laughs> okay, so here's how this works. We promise we haven't cheated. Miguel has promised he didn't take anything out of his wallet either. Oh, that's really thick there, <laughs> Miguel. <laughs> nice wallet. <laughs> we're going to show you all what's in our wallets and what credit cards and everything that's in there right now. So we're just kind of making this up spontaneously. So how should this go? Who's going to go first? So since you're traveling, Mitch, do you want to go? Sure. I'll go first. Okay. okay I'm going to be really honest. I kind of decluttered my wallet because we've been on the cruise. So I kind of keep, you know, just the bare minimum in there when I go out. So I do let's go same. for it. First thing I got in here, let's, I got some cash in here. I got $140 cash. So uh, let's see, what cards do I have? So first card I have, <laughs> I have Polaritz. <laughs> <laughs> Chase preferred card, and I don't know why it's in my wallet, but yeah, I got his Chase preferred card. It's kind of my, you know, emergency. We need a credit card to use somewhere. It's the Visa. So in case I need a Visa, they don't take American Express. So that's the first card I have in my wallet. The next card I have in my wallet. Okay, I cheated. I taped over everything here. Um, I have the my... <laughs> No, of course, Mitch brings tape on vacation. That's right. I got my American Express gold card. I don't leave home without it. Um, my favorite card, I use this card everywhere. I get four points per dollar for dining and grocery. Because we're in Canada, if I go to the grocery store, I'm not going to get four times the points. But if we go out to eat, we got a couple more days we're going to spend in Vancouver. Got to be breaking out this American Express gold card. It is like top of wallet. I always use this card everywhere we go. So my American Express gold card. and. I only had three cards in there. My final card is my Capital One Venture X card. Probably my second favorite card. It's two points on everything. It's why I carry it. So that's pretty much all I have in my wallet right now. So because I decluttered my wallet before I came. Okay, so I have a question. Do you have any incidentals on this cruise? And what card are you going to use to pay for those incidentals? Of course, he has incidentals. 
Do they do room service? <laughs> room service. Okay, so that is a great question, Serena, because a little hot tip here. So they have a casino on board our cruise ship. I wanted to test what happens when you decide to load the slot machine with your room key and it codes to your room as a regular charge. So mm -hmm. I've got my Capital One Venture X on file. We got our final invoice because we leave tomorrow and it posted it wasn't a cash advance it posted just like a regular charge i'm just saying you want to go to the casino and cash out you know <laughs> might be a good way to hit a minimum spend requirement on a cruise i don't know i'm just saying great tip mitch yeah. i have a royal caribbean cruise coming up in june i'm going to try that but here's the thing. So the cruise ship that we were on, they only cash out in euro. That's kind of the dilemma I have right now. How much euro do I want to take out on a credit card? So I didn't do too much, but yeah, I did. I did a couple hundred because we got some Europe stuff coming up. So Miguel, you had a fat wallet. So I think we should yeah, start with We you. need to allocate so, some time for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's normally not this fat. I, I like a minimalistic wallet. So that's why I have this wallet. You know, just for cards, a little cash um, strap in the back. I think I have like 40 or $60. But I've been traveling a lot for work and personal, so I, ha I need all the hotel cards just in case I have to switch my reservation last minute. So I want to be able to have either a Marriott or Hyatt card. All right, so this is what I got. So I have two oh, Marriott yeah. cards. <laughs> so it's like the business card uh, and the brilliant. I normally just have the brilliant in there, but I have the business one because I had Marriott reservations. And I think that's the card I have tied to the reservation. So just in case they want to see that one. And then sometimes if I do book the 5% discount lower rate, when you have the business card, you, you're supposed to pay with that card, I think. And then I have my favorite card or one of my favorite, I guess the Sapphire Reserve, Amex Gold. I have my American Airlines executive Platinum, whatever, <laughs> World Elite. The one with the uh, long name. Yeah, Capital One. And that one, um, I only have it so I could access the lounge. Now that I'm an authorized user on my wife's account, I have my USAA debit card if I need cash and my Hyatt uh, business card because I was staying at Hyatt and using cash rates. So I want to make sure that I get my $50 credit twice a year. I already got that, so... That's what I got. Wait, okay. You're holding all those cords right now because you've been traveling, right? Yeah. Normally, I don't carry. I mean, I try to be as minimalistic as possible. So probably just carry like the Amex Gold and Sapphire Reserve and the uh, debit card. That's about really all I carry. And I'm quite the opposite. I carry all of them all the oh, time. Dear. What? <laughs> <laughs> Do not. I swear to you, like, oh. this is my regular wallet. I literally just took it out of my handbag. Let me count how many. <laughs> you don't have one of these for like... No. For, oh, like, yeah. that That's a good one no, to no. have, Miguel. Yeah. Credit card wallet. No, well, this is not all of them. This is just what I have in my wallet now. <laughs> yeah. A lot more. There's a lot more in the, in the junk drawer. <laughs> there is. I have the... Alaska business card. I just got that one. I'm trying to make the minimum spend on that. I have two priority pass cards. You know, one, both of them are trash now because I can't get any restaurants anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Not till June. Not till June. Okay. I got some time. Um, I have the business cash in case I have to go to the office supply store. I don't even know why. I have James Gold business. <laughs> <laughs> I have my Sapphire Reserve. I have two Amex business cards. God, there's still more. Hold on. I'm going as fast as I can. There is the this is Venture so X. It's a 45 minute uh, show, Nicole. I know. I'm, I'm going. I'm getting there. All right. Another Alaska card. And I have my gold card. And then my Charles Schwab debit card. My Bank of America debit card. And James's Venture X. All right. We're done. Okay. You have two Alaska cards. Is one in another person's name? No, they're both in my name. One is business and one is personal. And this is your first time dabbling in Alaska, Miles, right? This is my first time. Yes. And is this for Starlooks? Of course it's for Starlooks. Nyla watched the video. One of her only videos <laughs> Nyla watched. And she was like, Dad, you need to apply for the Alaska card so that we can all fly in Starlooks. Talk about that. Talk about how you successfully got two Alaska business cards. Well, don't tell anyone, but I actually have three Alaska <laughs> cards. Ooh. 
<laughs> with Bank of America, you can apply for multiple cards within a 30 day period and they only check your credit once. So I applied for the business card and the personal card. And then because I have an LLC, I could apply for a business card under my LLC. That's why I got three cards. I tried to get a fourth one with my other LLC. <laughs> they were like, no, ma'am. No. <laughs> Good That's time. enough. <laughs> uh, so Bank of America was not like Oprah. You get a card. You get a card. Exactly. They were like, you there only get three cards, not four. It was worth the try, especially because they weren't going to run my credit again. So, I mean, it's a no, but, you know, I got three cards. It wasn't bad. All right, Serena, what do you have? Okay, I have my phone. I have Apple Pay open here. A few episodes ago, I opened the Capital One Venture X business card on our show, right? So my husband and I were still working on that card. Live. Yeah, I did it yes. live. My husband and I are still working on that card. The physical card is in his wallet. So I have it on my Apple Pay so I can use it because this is a MasterCard. However, I read on Miles Talk that they're switching this VentureX business card over to a Visa. So this has interesting implications because number one, maybe we can use it at Costco. Also, number two, they might remove the restaurants from this card. So this is a wait and see. We don't know what's going to happen, but it's interesting. So he needs a visa. My husband does because this is a MasterCard. So I need to put a visa in his wallet. I have a Capital One Venture X consumer card in his wallet so he can use it at Costco. And then we are are also um, trying to accumulate more American Express points with the dining offer where we can get 14x at restaurants and dining. And we talked about that deal a few episodes ago. So we are using our American Express business gold card with that. He has it in his wallet and I have it on Apple Pay. And that's it. We're very simple. <laughs> I'm always working on a minimum spend. So once we're done with this Venture X business card, it's going to move on to the next one that I'm working on. All right. So you guys have a lot of cards in your wallet. Well, except Serena, Miss Minimalistic. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say is your two top cards? Two top cards. I got them right now. It's the American Express Gold and it's the Capital One Venture X. Those are my two favorite cards. Those are the two cards I always keep in my wallet when I travel. Miguel. So my top two is American Express Gold and the Chase Sapphire Reserve, and they will always be in my wallet. I have a little bit of Serena in me. I'm using number one, whichever card I'm making a minimum spend on. And I also have that dining offer. So I'm using the American Express Business Gold. So tell us in the comments what your top two cards are. What are the cards that are front of mind that are always in your wallet? Leave us a comment below and we'd like to hear them. Yes, Nicole. So I'm kind of looking forward to the comments to see what kind of cards people have in their wallet as well and see how they compare to ours. So let's continue on. And guys, there's something I really want to talk about. I don't know if you saw the news this week, but Qatar Airways is about to release a United States based credit card. And it's a little different than what we've seen. First off, what is interesting to me about this card is for those of us that have been around for a while, do you all remember the Chase Aeroplane card, the United States one that came out a couple of years ago? Yes. Yeah. So the way that they set that up was, is if you pre-registered, entered into this little thing of where whenever they announced the sign up bonus and the new card, they were going to give you an additional 10,000 aeroplane miles on top of that sign up bonus. And that was a cool little deal because when I signed up for it, you know, me and my P2, we both got an additional total of 20,000 aeroplane miles. So at the time, the sign up bonus was the 50,000 point certificate times two and an additional 10,000 bonus points. So it came out to like 110,000 bonus sign up, which was great for just giving our email address and having them email us when the card came out. So I'm kind of looking forward to this. Are any of you guys signing up for this? What are your thoughts on this? So I actually did sign up for it. So I don't think I'm going to get the card, but I don't know what the offer will be. So I was like, it doesn't hurt me to just sign up to their mailing list. And if I'm interested and I end up getting the card, I'll get an extra bonus. Uh, just by signing up. So I did sign up and we'll see what the offer is, but uh, it'll be interesting to to see a new car, especially from Qatar Airways. Yeah, same with me. I am going to add myself to the wait list and everyone in my family as well. Doesn't hurt. I agree, Miguel. 
<laughs> of course. One I time didn't think comes. that far ahead. <laughs> for real, I needed to die. You are steps anyway. ahead, Serena. So I did the same thing for Aeroplan. I signed up everyone in my family for, to be on the wait list, but we ended up not opening any of them. So definitely do it. It's kind of like when there's a promo out there, sign up just to sign up because you never know. When the time comes to open the card, I don't know if I'm actually going to do it, but I'm going to evaluate where I'm at at that time, how it is on my priority list, you know. How about you, Nicole? This one's more of a meh for me. Yeah, hey, we're not playing <laughs> like the a, game. Like a meh for me. <laughs> I signed up for it because, you know, FOMO and what if there's an extra deal attached to it. But um, I'm curious to see what the offer is going to be. But I mean, when I think about flexible points, I feel like I'd rather get flexible points rather than be pinholed into one airline. But the good thing about Qatar is you can use them on other One World partners, hopefully. So let's see. What if it has access to that Louis Vuitton lounge in Doha? Oh, yeah. Just by holding. Wait, that'd be cool. Because isn't isn't like the only way to get in, like to have Qatar status? Yeah. One world is not enough. So one world status is not even enough to get into Qatar's own lounges there in Doha. They'll send you to a different lounge. So maybe with this card, you can access the lounges or I mean, I'd like to see some other type of benefits like that. Who's the issuing bank for this card? People are thinking it's going to be Chase, but I don't think that's set in stone yet. No, no, no. It's like free form or something like that. No, no, that. They, cardless. They... Oh, you're right. You're right. It is cardless. Yeah. yeah. But, it, but Cardless not the bank. They're just, they have a few other cards, but they're not the bank that's backing. Do they use the same bank for all their cards though? I think one of the last ones they did, it was Chase. That's why people are thinking Chase, but it doesn't have to be because they are not Chase. So I'm kind of looking forward to this card. We'll see what the sign up bonus is. I hope it's just not like this crappy a and card that I keep getting emails for the United States version, you know, sign up and get 5,000 bonus points. You know, I have really good hope that this is a really good sign up bonus. It might be a really good card, you know, maybe take it for a spin one time, but I think you guys are all right. And Serena, I love your strategy as well. Sign up, you know, all your P's, P1, P2, P3 in your house and just have the option because, you know, it's better to have the option now than it come out and it's a really, really good offer that you want. And then you don't get that extra sign up bonus. So great strategy. We're going to put the link in the show notes for you if you want to, or wait, you should go ahead and get signed up for that. Now, speaking of other good credit cards, Serena, you've got something about the Hilton business card. Right. So with the Hilton business cards, they are issued by American Express. I first talked about these cards back in episode two, almost a year wow. ago. Don't go listen to it. <laughs> okay, don't. <laughs> don't go listen to it. Crappy sound, <laughs> bad lighting. Yeah, bad visuals. <laughs> Bad audio. <laughs> Just stay here. You're fine here. Yes. And move backwards. Exactly. <laughs> so at that time, the offer was elevated and I signed up most of my P's for it. I signed up myself for the card. I signed up my husband for the card. And I also signed up my mom for the card as well. But since then... Just recently, American Express announced changes to the Hilton business cards. The multipliers are changing. They are removing the free night certificate after spend, and they're increasing the annual fee from $95 to $195. But also, in true American Express fashion, they added credits. There is now a quarterly $60 Hilton credit to be used at Hilton properties. So I've evaluated this for myself and I already know I'm not planning to keep this card anymore because I don't like the higher fee and I also don't like how they removed the free night certificate. So when the annual fee posts, I'll check to see if there's a retention offer and if not, I'm just going to close the card. But in the meantime, I need to make use of these $60 quarterly credits. So I have a stay at a Hilton property in June in Florida. So I called the hotel and asked to charge an amount to my folio equal to the credit. They put me in touch with the accounting department and the guy there is so nice because I've been talking to him frequently over the last few months and I've been able to charge amounts onto my account. So I did three $60 charges, one on my card, one on my husband's card and one on my mom's card. I also did this for last quarter and I did this for this quarter. So when I stay there in June, I'll have some funds to use for meals, any paid activities, even the spa if that property has one. So these Hilton credits are also on the Surpass card and the Aspire card has a resort credit which can only be used at Hilton hotels classified as resorts. So with my Hilton Aspire card, there is a $200 resort credit that will expire at the end of June. I have a stay at a Waldorf Astoria later this year. So I've done the same thing. I contacted 
to the property, asked them to charge a certain amount to my folio. They had me fill out a form. They wanted me to send in my card and then send in a copy of my passport. And then they took care of the charge. If you have any Hilton cards and you have credits like these to use, you can look at future reservations that you may have and apply the amounts to your reservation for future hotel incidentals. So other ways that you can use these Hilton credits is to pay for room stays. And also you can buy physical Hilton gift cards online. Just be aware that there is a shipping charge that you'll have to pay, but recently they have been crediting you for these charges if you buy a physical gift card. So these are some of the things you can think about if you have Hilton cards and if you have these credits to use. So I'm going to share a funny story. So the Waldorf that I just talked about is the Waldorf Astoria Seychelles. I'm going to be staying there later this year. And I use my Hilton Aspire credit to apply to my folio at this property for later this year. There was a little bit of a hiccup when I tried to do this. They responded back to me after I submitted my information and they said to me that their American Express machine was down. And I laughed because every single Hilton co-branded card right now is offered by American Express. They used to have a city card that was a Visa, but now they're all Amex cards. And so I'm like, aha, this is so funny. So our friend Chu at Choose to Explore, you should check out his YouTube page. He's actually at the Waldorf Astoria Seychelles now. I actually sent him a screenshot of my email and I said, good luck settling your bill. <laughs> <laughs> and so funny, at that wow. same time that he received my screenshot, he was trying to pay his bill. And they told him, we can't take American Express right now. And he wow. said to them, wow. I'm not paying my bill then. <laughs> Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. I approve that message. Yes. <laughs> so what happens is the next thing I knew, I get an email and it says, okay, this is what we'll do. We'll process the charge of the Mango House. And the Mango House is an LXR property, which is another luxury Hilton brand that's also in the Seychelles. So they offer to process it there and then transfer that charge over to Waldorf. So when I'm ready to use it, it'll be there. And so that's what they did for Chu too. And so luckily Chu is there at that same time to put pressure on them with his Amex card too, so that we can both get this done. For those of you who plan to stay at this property in the future, you can thank me and Chu for opening up the American Express window for you. Otherwise, I don't know how people are gonna settle their bill. It only makes sense to use a Hilton card there, especially with the credits that come with the card. Oh God, I'm gonna write that line down. Oh, it's not working? Then I'm not paying the bill. You should try that at a Chinese restaurant because they are notorious for not accepting American Express cards. I don't know, I'm from Jamaica and there's a lot of Chinese. I learned not to play with the Chinese people. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. No, thank but you. When I got this email from them, I was thinking, what are you, a Chinese restaurant? Not taking American <laughs> Express? Anyway, happy ending. Yeah, very good happy ending. I mean, how does that even work that a mm -hmm. uh, Hilton property can't take American <laughs> Express. I mean, I, I don't understand that. I know. It's hilarious. You yeah. know, I think what happens in this situation is if uh, closed mouths don't get fed. So maybe if I was in that situation, usually people have more than one credit card. They'd be like, oh, let me just switch the card. Yeah. Pull out another one. Yeah. Yeah. If you're not advocating for yourself or don't even know that you could, you would just take whatever they give you. Always open your mouth. <laughs> and advocate for yourself. I'm so glad you added that part. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Let's keep our family rating. <laughs> All right, Serena, so that's great that you were able to get Chu on your side and pretty much everyone else's side in getting that settled. That was a nice little ending to that story. But one of my favorite programs is Singapore Chris Flyer Miles. And I've got some miles in there and we all know the rules with Singapore Chris Flyer. They expire, hard expire after three years. And I've got some in there that are going to be expiring probably in the next year. So Miguel, you've got good news on how I can use these, right? Yeah, so I wanted to talk about Singapore's Spontaneous Escapes. What this is, is pretty much like a monthly promotion that they have where they offer discounts on award flights. So these promotions are usually released about mid-month and they'll run until the end of the month in which they're announced. 
for flights that you can book the following month. So for example, they released the April Spontaneous Escapes mid-April and you have until April 30th to book any flights into May. Now, most of the routes are usually between Singapore and somewhere else, but there are some Fifth Freedom routes that qualify as well. So in the US, we have what they call Fifth Freedom routes with Singapore Airlines. So we have New York to Frankfurt, we have Houston to Manchester, LA to Tokyo, and San Francisco to Singapore. Some of those qualify different months. This month in April, you can actually book the New York to Frankfurt and they have 30% off in either economy, premium economy or business class. So if you wanted to travel between New York and Frankfurt, the rates this month for economy are 17,500 miles. There are 36,400 in premium economy and 56,700 in business class. The typical rate for the New York to Frankfurt route is 81,000 at the saver level or 87,500 at the standard rate. So it's a pretty good discount. Let's not forget that you can also book the New York to Frankfurt route using Air Canada airplane points. And that's only 60,000 miles with a little bit more flexibility because the Singapore spontaneous escapes have a major restriction. And that is you cannot change or cancel those flights. So that's kind of the drawback. But if you have a trip that's more than likely going to happen in the next month, then you should look into the Singapore spontaneous escapes for a pretty good discount. Another restriction is that sometimes there's blackout dates. So you want to look at the details on Singapore Airlines spontaneous escapes website to see which states don't fall under the promotion period. The other route that qualifies for this promotion this month is the route between San Francisco and Singapore, but that's only in economy and that's about 29,000 uh, miles. And if you don't have Singapore airline miles, the good thing is that you can transfer from all the major banks that have transferable points. We're talking about American Express, Chase, Capital One, and City Thank You Points. And just like Pitch, this is also one of my favorite programs or airlines, really. I think Singapore Airlines has some of the best service out there. So just want to put it out there again. Love Singapore Airlines. Yeah, they don't throw me shade when I ask for more food. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't cancel your flights. <laughs> Exactly. Actually, I really like their dessert. It's this uh, toffee pudding, right? I really liked it. And I was telling the FA, oh my gosh, this is so good. And she said to me, would you like another one? <laughs> and I said, ooh, wow, that's so nice. But I need to, you know, watch my weight. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of spontaneous, I had to spontaneously go to Jamaica this weekend. It was for the passing of my grandmother, but it was more of a celebration of life. I forgot how much, how much I love Jamaica. It's been, I don't know, over five years since the last time I've been back. I don't even think I can conjure the emotion <laughs> that I felt. When you land in Jamaica, the people on the plane, I don't know if you like it or not, but I love it. They applaud, like loud, roaring applaud. And this one lady was like, welcome to the best country in the world. I was like, yes, ma'am. So some things about Jamaica. Okay, first of all, there is an arrival lounge. Nothing made me happier than to get off the plane and be escorted to a lounge that's serving unlimited patties and rum punch. Thank God I wasn't driving because after the third rum punch, <laughs> I was good to no one. <laughs> And because everyone in my immediate family has their Priority Pass Lounge, you can access the Club Mobay Arrival Lounge using Priority Pass. So even though it's kind of a restaurant, it still counts as a lounge. So all the Priority Pass will allow you to have access there. And so we were traveling with about 12 people. And so each one of us was able to take someone in. So it was all of my family in and out of this club lounge. I don't know. I'm getting a little emotional. It was just good to go home and be able to share the benefits of these credit cards with the rest of my family. That sounds amazing. Yeah. And I think I saw some to-go plates. Did they fix you some to-go plates? Oh, my God. So the club was full, right? And so I told her, listen, it's fine. We just want something to go. She goes, what do you want? I said to her, uh, can I please have one of everything? She said, like any Jamaican would say, no problem, man. Uh, my daughter went in. She had the same request. My niece went in. We had the same request. We left with like 16 little boxes of food and they had no problem giving it to us. Two things you have to do when you go to Jamaica. You have to go to the beach and you have to eat the food. You must eat KFC. And when you go to KFC, ask for the barbecue chicken. The line at KFC is like an hour long and people wait in the line. It's that good. Nicole, is that anything like the KFC here? Like, is there a difference? Absolutely the not. I, okay, it's totally different. Like, it's not affiliated at all. It's kind of like the Costco that it's a knockoff, like that. <laughs> it's not a knockoff. <laughs> 
<laughs> it is a franchise of KFC, but I think just like when you go to an Indian McDonald's, they're not serving you beef, right? So they're able to alter the menu based on the people that live there. And we have a barbecue chicken. I mean, every time my sister goes to Jamaica on her way out, she stops at KFC, gets a bucket of barbecue chicken and brings it home. Second thing, you must have the patty. Like I know everywhere sells a Jamaican patty, but this patty, when you eat it, if there's not crumbs in your entire lap, it wasn't good. That's for the food. Some places you have to visit, Duns River Falls. Anytime you Google Jamaica, that comes up. But a lesser known place, maybe like half an hour away, is called the Blue Hole. So we go there every time. It's a waterfall that you can climb. It's much less crowded and you get a guide when you go in. If you don't have a Jamaican passport, they're going to charge you $25. Now the water in this place, I don't know if you guys are, I think you guys are old enough. Do you remember Brooke Shields? The movie Blue Lagoon. The water is pristine blue. Everyone got to the top. We were able to jump off the ledge. My crazy teenage son did a whole backflip. I swear I was going to oh, kill him. Oh, wow. We had the rope swing and just everybody had a good time. And the water, even though Jamaica is super hot, the water is super cold because it's coming from the river. In Jamaica, we stayed at my sister's Airbnb. It's in a community called Richmond in St. Anne's Bay. And it is a lovely community. There's a massive pool. There's gyms. And the house is a three-bedroom house. And we fit up to 10 people in this property. I'll leave the link in the description below in case you guys are visiting Jamaica and want to stay at a nice Airbnb and take all your family. It's a really good location. It's about 20, 30 minutes from everything that's popular in Ocherias in Jamaica. All right, one last thing, the lounge on exit. We left out of Montego Bay and we got to go to the lounge close to gate one. That lounge was just renovated about three months ago. The staff in there is so amazing. This guy told us, he goes, my name is Andrew, but they call me Dr. Smooth because if you're not having a good time, I'm gonna make it smooth. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there is rice and peas, fish. There is Jamaican patties again, an unlimited amount of rum punch. Do you remember Nana from Costa Rica? She had one rum punch and she was out. Mitch, <laughs> plug in some B-roll here. I have Nana sleeping <laughs> at the lounge. I mean, like she, you would think it's her bedroom. She's just laid out across the bench. I highly recommend anyone going to Jamaica. It is a complete vibe. When I visit Jamaica, it's not like a park Hyatt Starlux kind of stay. It's more homey, but I think that's the best way to get the vibe of Jamaica. Like if you're staying in an all inclusive, take a day and go out and venture eat some food, see the people. That's the best way to see Jamaica. I am going to put it right back on the top of my list and I hope to go back there very soon. The food was great, but it's not great for your waistline, but definitely try it if you go. <laughs> I liked your point about the waistline there, Nicole, because I don't know if you can see my waistline or not, but um, yeah, it's pretty bad right now. I think I put on 10 pounds because I'm on this cruise and it's oh really embarrassing. Wait, Mitch, before you start about your cruise. So before I left, I put on a dress to go to the funeral, right? And it zipped. I was only there for three days. When it was time for the funeral, I had my son and my daughter try to zip me in the dress and it wouldn't fit. I had oh, to wear something else. It's probably our rum punch weight. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be gone with your first run, your next run. Oh my God. I can imagine on the cruise must be the same thing, right? The food is so good. Yeah, I was going to say it's probably the rum punch too. Um, it's the food <laughs> on the cruise. Yeah, it's it's the same thing. We're, we're living in the same world right now, Nicole. So we are continuing our, I guess you call it our spring break mega vacation. Last week we were in Taiwan <laughs> yeah. and this week we are on a cruise. So we're doing this Explora cruise and I'm, you probably haven't heard of them before so let me kind of fill you in a little bit on who they are so i don't know if you know who the aponte family is so they're from switzerland they own the msc group which is the cruise lines and the container shipping company so maybe this might help you they have over like a hundred billion dollars they're probably one of the richest people in the world <laughs> oh yeah i know them yeah you know we're good friends they're a friend of mine <laughs> yes they don't have to worry about credit card points and miles that's how rich those are but yeah th that's kind of who these people are. So they had this vision. They wanted to come up with a luxury cruise line. And I've kind of had my eye on this for a while. I've seen ads for it and everything. And I'm like, let's try it. Here we are. We're aboard the Explorer One. We're in Canada right now. We're getting ready to wrap up this cruise. And just like you, Nicole, the food on this cruise has just been mind blowing. So a couple things I want to talk about the food on the cruise is number one, everyone loves a good buffet. The buffet on this 
this cruise is elevated because when you go, everything is pretty much custom made. They have a salad bar, but you say, I want this on my salad. They have a pasta bar. You go and say, I want this noodle and I want this sauce. They make lobster tails, shrimp, fresh to order. They've got oysters, crab legs, anything that you could want at this buffet. And it's been incredible. And the other thing that is top of the list, you know, luxury, everything about this has been great. But the coolest part about this is the Wi-Fi. And I don't know if anyone's ever done a podcast from a cruise, but the Wi-Fi speed on this ship, it's the Starlink satellite service that they have. I've been doing speed tests the entire time I've been on this, and I've constantly got a 100 megabyte download and at least 40 megabyte upload speed on this entire time I have been on this cruise. So we have had a fantastic time. You know, Serena's kind of mentioned it over and over on our show that one of the best vacations you can take with your family is a cruise. And I think my family, you know, my husband, Polaroid, his mom, Aunt Peggy, his brother, John, we've all had an incredible time on this cruise. That's the other thing about this is pretty much everything's included. There's no drink packages. There's no meal packages. It's just whatever you want. Go down to the bar. You want a cocktail? Get it. You want to order wine to your room? You can get it. We wanted an elevated cruise experience for his mom. And and that's what we did. It's been great. So Mitch, how big is the ship? How many passengers can fit on the ship? So right now it can hold roughly around a thousand, probably a little bit less than that. And we were talking with a lot of the crew here and right now they have about 700 passengers and they said that's the most that they've ever had because it's a pretty new cruise line. To them, that was kind of a lot because they're used to having these light loads of passengers. The crew has been incredible. Any request you throw at them, they'll do it for you no matter what. And I think that's the real stars of the show. This cruise is just the service. Service. There's not been a no. It's always been, yes, absolutely. Let me make it better for you. Whatever you need. They haven't asked you to wait 15 minutes because that's when the next meal service is. <laughs> <laughs> Do you still want it? Oh, the bread sandwich, where's the beef? No, not at all. It's just, I can't even put it into words how incredible the crew and staff is here. So some of you may know this, but you know, a lot of these employees, they're on contracts and it goes for like a four to six month contract. And we were talking with the captain. That's another thing that we got to do. That was pretty cool. I got to talk with him. And he said probably roughly about 80% of the crew renewed their contracts for the second time that they enjoy working for this cruise line. And it's been a lot of fun for them. What are some of the activities that they have on board? Yeah. So it's not your typical, you know, Mexico type cruise where you go and it's... (laughs) There's no newlywed game? Yeah, there's no newlywed game. There's no DJ with people handing out shots and stuff in the (laughs) There's no whistle. There's no bottle of tequila. It's not no wet t shirt contest. (laughs) Oh Oh, yeah. (laughs) It's none of that. It's so one night they had kind of like a jazz show, which was really nice. Some of the other things is they've been having a lot of talks and a lot of seminars. That was one that I did that I personally liked was getting to talk with the captain about his life. And it was kind of like the below deck you know, kind of Captain Sandy type thing, getting to talk to him about his career and everything that he's done here at the Cruise Line Explorer. Okay, Mitch, you talked about the lobster and the crab legs. Are those all you can eat? Yes, it's absolutely all you can eat. So it's not like you need to show your room key. You don't need to tap to pay. So today we just (laughs) had room service because, you know, why not? Poor, it's like, oh, isn't it funny? They didn't ask us to sign the check. (laughs) Yeah, it's all you can eat. All the shrimp, all the crab, everything that you want to eat they'll bring it to you. They try to do a really good job at keeping things sustainable. If they have leftovers like crab and stuff, they'll try to use it, repurpose it in other ways. Like they'll make a salad or something else with that for the next day. So this is how I know that it's a really nice cruise line. When they offer all you can eat seafood, the Mm -hmm. high end seafood, the lobster tails and the crab legs. My family has been on many mainstream ocean liners and my dad loves the lobster tails. We always make lobster night and he always (laughs) asks for another one. And they always reluctantly say, oh, I got you the last one. So he gets max (laughs) two, okay? And I give him mine, so maybe he has three. So they're very stingy on all the other liners, but Mm. if you can have all you can eat, that's a good one. It's literally all that you can eat. So the one night they had the crab legs at the buffet for dinner and we went and oh my God, these crab legs, they were massive and they cracked them perfectly. So you could just scoop out the crab meat and just, it was, it was mind blowing how good it was. Wait, they're cracking the crab legs for you? Oh yeah. And then they're serving them out of their bosom into your mouth. (laughs) (laughs) 
that's the other thing. Mini bar. They've got an unlimited mini bar here too. So you need more wine, you need more cocktails, they'll reload your mini bar for you. So it's been a fantastic cruise. You know, I think I've done enough footage to where I could do like a special edition episode about this. I don't know if this is really for points and miles people, but if you're kind of into this high end stuff, you know, if you're a Park Hyatt type of person, you know, this might be the cruise for you. Serena. I yeah. was just going to do that, Serena. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I totally go on this cruise. So Mitch, yeah. I want to know what the incidentals are. So most of the stuff is included. Great food, drinks, no drink or food packages. So what are some of the things that if you want to go a little bit over the top, what can you spend more money on? Yeah. So that is one of the things with our package. We did get a 300 euro credit for our cruise. So they kind of have like the top, top shelf liquor that's not included. So say you wanted a bottle of Dom Perignon, you know, you could get that. They also have this Michelin star restaurant on board. It's called Anthology. We did that. And that was Of course just, you did. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> that's what we spent our credit on fine dining. It was mind blowing. It was a seven course tasting meal. And probably one of my favorite dishes was the caviar. Of course. <laughs> of course. Was there a seafood foam? Yes. A Parmesan foam is what was, was on that. And the second favorite dish was the scallop cannoli. It was just... Mm. Yeah, really, really good. I'm pretty sure after watching this special, I'm going to want to book something because I'm not really a cruise person. I've mentioned before that if I did one, I'd probably want to do the Virgin Voyages with my wife or do a Disney cruise with a family. But this other one, you're making it sound like really, really good. So I'm sure this special edition is going to make some of us book this. Let me add this real quick, OK, Miguel, because poor it, my husband, he's exactly like you. He is not a cruise person at all like anti-cruise doesn't want to do it so what happened yesterday we were sitting in the forward lounge and he's like oh maybe we should see where explorer goes again i think we should do this again <laughs> i fell on the floor he <laughs> wants to book another one of these and that's just that speaks volumes because he is a non-anti-cruise person and for him to say that is like something really good must have happened so uh, that was my other question what other itineraries does explorer have so far they only have one ship the Aponte family, they've decided they want to go full steam ahead. No pun intended. Um, they're going to have another <laughs> ship. They're going to have Explorer 2. And I think it's getting ready to come out soon. And right now, it's just the ship just kind of goes around. I They showed us this video. It was their first time through the Panama Canal. So they went from the Caribbean all the way around. And that's where we picked up the ship. We came up here. Now we're in Vancouver. It's going to go back to L.A. And then the crew's kind of excited. They're going to go out to Hawaii. So that's where they're going next. I'm sure I said one last question, but I probably... I promise you this is the last question. Is this a cruise for families? Did you see any kids or teenagers on board? So they do have a kid's game room, and this is probably one of the coolest game rooms for kids I've seen. I'll show you some video right here. You walk in, they have like this mini pool table where they can play pool. They had these three TVs with this gaming system that was just, yeah. So I asked the crew, I said, are any kids on this cruise? And they said, there's only five teenagers on this cruise. But they said two cruises ago, there was about 65 kids. So it seems to be kind of mixed about wherever the ship goes or if it's a spring vacation type of cruise if kids are on here or not. So I know I mentioned earlier how this isn't really a points and miles type of thing, but one of the ways that we did offset the cost of this cruise is a couple of ways. So seems like over the life of this show, we've all kind of mentioned it before. And I just remember because Serena was talking about it during our game show recently is you always want to diversify. And one of the ways that we help offset the cost of this cruise is we've been doing bank bonuses. So we paid cash for this cruise. We didn't get it for free. We paid for it and we've been doing bank bonuses. So probably over the past year and a half, we've made a total of around about $2,000 in bank bonuses. We recently did the Wells Fargo one, which is $350. We've done a couple of Chase personal and business ones as well. So we offset it by using that cash to help pay for this cruise because you can't really book it with points or anything like that. The other thing that we did is we also... Once again, this is what you guys do, right? We got a couple of new cards to help pay for the cruise to get that sign up bonus as well, to hit a couple of those sign up bonuses. So, you know, in essence, there is some ways that you can tie some points and miles into this and diversify the way that we paid for this cruise. Like you mentioned, it's a good way to hit a minimum spend. So you are thinking of spending a lot of money, not just on a cruise, but on any trip. It's a, always a good time to get a new card because you're already paying for that trip anyway. Get some points for the next trip. So since we already have Mitch going on a 
spirit flight. I say we <laughs> amend that itinerary <laughs> and add like a carnival cruise, maybe like one of those two-day <laughs> Miami <laughs> wet t-shirt contest kind of cruise. Oh. <laughs> Put the them on a cheap cruise. <laughs> yeah, the fun yeah, ship. Those, yes. The free cruises, the ones they give away. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You know, it's been a lot of fun. Um, I don't know about that idea, Nicole. Maybe we can <laughs> revisit that later. <laughs> but, you know, it's great. Give me a month or two. I'll work on that special edition episode. And, you know, tell me, what do you think? Do you want to see that? Is that something that's interesting to you? Yeah. I would really love to hear about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, are you asking the audience? You can answer, Miguel. It's okay. Yeah, well, I wa Miguel I wa I wa wants to see it. <laughs> Oh, uh, yes. And Miguel, I promise. Okay. For you, I will do it. Yes. But yeah, everyone else, you know, drop us a comment. I would love to know if you want, this is something that you want to see, if this is something that you're interested in. And I will show you everything that we did on this cruise. I think it would do really well. And by then, if you're interested, let us know. And then, you know, hey, maybe we could help you book it too. Okay. Yes. Love the confetti. That is a big celebration. All right. It's now time to move on to Ask Us. Points team, Chrissy from Los Angeles here. Thank you so much for all the energy that you bring to the podcast every week. I'm just having a blast listening to the four of you, uh, you know, tell your travel stories and talk about the deals you're finding. And I'm learning so much from you. So thank you. Two part question for you. We are working on a sign up bonus right now for the Capital One Venture X business card. I helped my husband uh, sign up for that card and we're going for the 300,000 mile bonus, which I thought we'd be able to hit easily because he owns a business that has a legit amount of spend. But the snag that we're running into is that the card keeps getting declined even for like small amounts. So I hadn't totally thought through this that since this is a charge card with no preset limit that it actually takes some time to build up credit with them because I want to be able to confidently, you know, give that card to the team and say, go use this. Part one of my question is, do you have any tips on how to build up credit more quickly with one of your issuers if you are on one of your cards, um, if it's a charge card specifically? Part two of my question is, I know Capital One has a pretty good travel portal and I'd love to get 10x points on I think it's hotels and rental cars and then 5x points on flights. But I did remember that you said that American Airlines recently came out with that rule that you have to book directly through them in order to get your loyalty points or miles with them. And I just wanted to ask, are there other either airlines or major airlines or major hotels to know about that that's also the case? I would just hate if the team uh, was traveling for work and not earning their miles because I wanted them to be booked through the portal. So I I got my credit card points. So just want to make sure I'm understanding that correctly. Thank you so much for everything. Look forward to hearing from you. Hi, Chrissy. Thank you for your video question. We love your energy and your smile. Okay, guys, Chrissy loves our show. So we got to help her out here. Serena, I know you probably got some firsthand experience dealing with Capital One since you just opened, and I might add live on our show too, the <laughs> new Biz Venture X card from Capital One. So what are you going to tell her? Hi, Chrissy. Congratulations on that approval. It's not an easy one to get. You have some really nice Capital One miles coming your way. Regarding the problem with your charges getting denied, that is so frustrating. Capital One can be a pain in the butt, and I'm so sorry for that. So here are some things that you can do. On the Capital One website, when you log in, there is a tool. It's called Confirm Purchasing Power. And here you can put in the amount of your next large purchase, and that can be up to a million dollars. And this tool will tell you whether or not it will be approved or not. And if that doesn't work, another thing you could do is to call them. One thing that they might suggest is to pay your bill more often. Even if you're making small amounts on your card, if you're reaching a threshold that's uncomfortable for Capital One and they're just trying to feel how you are as a customer, they may want you to pay your bill more frequently. So that's something that maybe you can suggest or something that they will end up suggesting to you. You can also talk to them about why your charges are getting denied and maybe if there's something that they can do on their side to help you get your charges through. You can also throw on the old, well, you know what? American Express will gladly take these charges. I will 
will have no problem with them and see what they say. I have a feeling they're going to do something to help you out. So let us know how it goes. Good luck. Yes, yeah, Serena. I don't have that Capital One business card, but I do have charge cards with American Express and I wish I knew how their algorithm works. But something that I regularly do, not only with business charge cards or uh, any card, is I do more frequent uh, payments. So I don't wait for the end of the month. I do as I'm pretty much as I'm using them weekly, maybe. And I feel like more frequent payments could only help increase whatever threshold they have that they don't tell us, right? The true spending power that, that you have for those cards. Regarding the second question, American Airlines is the only one that's pretty much said anything about uh, loyalty points or elite status if you don't book direct, but they haven't published the list of who the preferred travel partners will be. So hopefully Capital One is on there and you don't have to worry about it at all. But I would say whatever is best for the business, that's where I would go if it were my business. And that's what makes it easier for booking uh, employee travel. That's what I would do. And you're earning your 10x miles. I'd say, you know, sorry, employees, if they don't earn any loyalty points or any benefits for them. But I would say you come first here. I have an employer that I have to travel for and they have their travel policies. I can't book on my own. I have to book through a certain portal. And that's just a requirement of working there. So that could be a requirement for your employees to have to have the travel book through Capital One. If they don't earn any miles for flight, then then so be it. I would get my 10x. You know, I don't know about you guys. Hi, Chrissy. Congratulations on your new Capital One business card. In regards to booking directly with the airline versus to the portal, so it's quite likely that other airlines may follow the same trend and require you to book directly through their website in order to get elite benefits. Now, I would probably pose a challenge to my employees. Maybe if they could find, and maybe you set a threshold, if you could find a flight directly with the airlines that's say 20, 25% cheaper, maybe you would go that way. So the company is saving money and they're getting a benefit. But other than that, I agree with Miguel. It's your company and the benefit should lie with you. So if it's more advantageous for you to get 10x points, then that's what the company should do. What do you think, Mitch? How should she go about handling this situation with loyalty points? Yeah, I agree with everyone here. And I just kind of want to tag on a little bit to what you and Miguel were talking about. And I want to give a specific example. Last week on the episode, I was in Kaohsiung and I was at their Marriott. And, you know, I've talked about this before in a couple of different episodes as well, but I had the Capital One Venture X and we all know that it comes with a $300 annual travel credit. Well, you know, I kind of put it off and I forgot about it, but that's how I booked the Marriott in Kaohsiung was directly through the Capital One VentureX travel portal. And that's just kind of the world that we live in these days when it comes to the hotel part of this. You have to make a decision. So the first option is, is you can book directly with the hotel and make that choice. Do you want the benefits and do you want the points and the status and everything that comes with that? Or there's the other option and that's what we did. We booked through the Capital One VentureX travel portal and we are both lifetime platinums with Marriott and it was kind of a difficult decision to make because what we gave up is we gave up lounge access. We gave up late checkout and everything else that came along with that. And not only that, when we were checking in, they reminded us multiple times that we had booked directly through Expedia, which is the partner of Capital One, and that all of our benefits did not apply to that stay. But on the other hand, you know, there are some pros and cons to this. So what are the pros? So by booking through Capital One Travel Portal, here's one of the pros to that. We were able to do a price match. And because of that price match, we were able to get a $30 future travel credit for that by price matching to the price that was on the Marriott website. So that is one of the pros. One of the cons, like I said, we didn't get any of the benefits that came along with our stay. So that's some of the decisions that you are going to need to make as you go through this world of points and miles is, are you going to book directly with the hotel or are you going to book through the credit card portal? However way you do it, that's a decision that you are going to need to make. So booking through that travel portal, whatever it is, Capital One, Chase, take your pick, that is considered a third party. So because of that, especially with hotels, nine times out of 10, you will not get those those benefits and you will not get those points on the hotel side of that. Chrissy, if you're going to be booking flights through the travel portal, you want to consider this. If there are any issues that come up with the flight, you're going to have to contact Capital One to help fix those issues. And if you are traveling for business and it's most important to get a quick resolution, it might be in your benefit to book directly with the airlines. 
So just keep that in mind. Yeah, that is some good advice. So thank you for that, Nicole. And thank you, everyone. And thank you, Chrissy, for sending us your video question. Please let us know how things go. With Capital One, it's always great to share data points, and we like doing that as well. So anything you get, we'd appreciate hearing about it too. So it's so easy for you to be on our show. Simply drop us a line on any one of our social media channels or visit our website at letsgettothepoints.com and we'll answer your question right here. That's it for now. I want to thank all of our hosts. It's Serena. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Miguel. Later. And it's good to see you too, Nicole. Thank you so much. See you guys next week. And I'm Mitch Shannon. You can find out more about us at our website, letsgettothepoints.com. And we'll all see you here next Friday. Thanks for watching and listening. Let's get to the point. Dot com.